Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. One of the golden phase uh, Col Colombiensis. Obviously uh, not interested in hesitating about that meal, huh? Are we doing a happy Columbiensis there? Yes, we are. Well, that's a first. Okay, well, I'll, I'll shut this and let you enjoy your meal, and I might even have some extras for you. There you go. Wow, a happy Columbiensis. Whoever knew. A strike and release sort of guy, huh? Here, it's ready to eat. Oh, okay. Let's go back to these two characters. I'm sure if they've eaten, they may want another. Would you like another? You would. If you insist. Look at that. You gonna do happy uh, bathrops again? Huh? No, you're just giving me that evil eye. I can see your slit. I'm sure from this distance your pit can see exactly uh, where my heat is. And um, if you really wanted to drop that in spring, you could, uh, you could definitely probably reach me and cause me to wet myself. I have tools here in front of me to try to deflect the uh, attack, but uh, um, I think uh, I think he'll just sort of sit there and and decide just to eat. Mmm, rat pinks. Well, we have chicks arriving tomorrow, so the finicky. Uh, Eastern coral snakes uh, may actually get to eat tomorrow night, and uh, um, you know maybe on the weekend or something when they're hungry again. I'm sure these uh, guys might like uh, uh, some chicks uh, to try. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of happy snakes. Yes, chicks are very popular here, and, and you know, sorry. Everybody he, in my place likes to eat chicks. <laughs> okay, so now you got a full tummy, so you move back uh, to the warm spot of the cage. Would you like another? You would? Okay. Well, that's possible. See, it's, it's always good to have enough room for the animal to thermoregulate themselves. You know, he had an empty tummy, he didn't need to be back by the, the heat panel at the back of the cage. What did he do? He ate, he went right and crawled right back to the heat so he could uh, digest properly. So, that's a nice little fang you got there, bud. Just keep it to yourself, please. <laughs> You know, back in the old days, it used to be really nice because the Wyeth antivenin uh, had uh, not only venoms from North American rattlesnakes and moccasins, uh, but it also had uh, venom from Bothrops atrox and Lachesis muta. Uh, so it, it, it also would cover a wide range of bothrops, uh, uh, which was really, really nice. Uh, 
the problem is that, you know, it was an old style serum and uh, old style serum without affinity purification uh, means that uh, uh, you're probably going to have some sort of uh, latent serum reaction because, you know, unlike new modern uh, serums, they used, you know, whole uh, horse immunoglobulin and uh, and it, it contained antibodies and stuff that wasn't necessarily uh, uh, for neutralizing the venom of the snakes that, that it was supposed to, but you know, wherever else the horse was allergic to or stuff, you'd get all that too. Uh, now they're affinity purified and only the antibodies that are for that particular uh, snake venom the horse was immunized against uh, do you get in that vial, which works really well. Now as Mrs. Viperkeeper was pointing down here, uh, well, he was in his water bowl doing a little submarining. Ah, well, I filled it last night, but I think they pooped in it. Or there's a piece of bark in it already. But uh, these two got so adept at pushing that stick out and, and getting very, very adept at, at almost opening the cage door uh, that I put a lock on it so they couldn't uh, do that and would be thwarted. Now, I came up here earlier and Mr. Russell was uh, up front here looking around. And he, of course, does not uh, mess around. These are very medically significant snakes throughout the range. Uh, they certainly uh, injure, maim, and kill uh, perhaps more people on the planet than any other snake uh, except maybe the sawscale viper. Um, they're found in India, Sri Lanka, uh, Pakistan, uh, through Burma, uh, certainly Thailand, uh, into China, actually even there's a species on Taiwan. Um, then they go south through Malaysia and Indonesia. Uh, they're, uh, they're serious problems for the locals. Uh, uh, the uh, the Boya siamensis. I mean, this is actually a Russelli Russelli, uh, but this is from India. Uh, but the uh, Thai and Indonesian variety actually uh, can cause micro infarcts uh, to one's pituitary, uh, basically killing off your hormone supply and basically you know your hair will fall out and you'll uh, uh, be sterile uh, not produce uh, uh, sex hormones uh, the blood is a powerful anticoagulant uh, but first it's a very powerful coagulant uh, you've seen the the movie uh, on National Ge Geographic Channel where uh, the uh, well they, they use quite a lot of venom but uh, you know there's no telling if that's you know sort of an amount that would be injected into a human it certainly could be they certainly uh, have enough of it but it turns this uh, uh, 20 or 30 milliliters of blood into this huge fibrin clot so what happens is when that's dispersed in your bloodstream, first you, you start having clotting issues which can cause the infarcts which I've talked about previously. Um, but then in this process, if you survive that, 
uh, your blood liquefies because all the clotting factors were used up in this uh, first uh, uh, attack of the venom and then you start uh, bleeding from all over the place uh, including you know uh, gums your ears your eyes your pores uh, your gut um, you name it you bleed from it uh, and that's what usually kills most of the people now interestingly enough this venom is very useful because many years ago they they used it to create a test for a autoimmune disease called lupus which kills lots and lots of people mostly affects women is that tasty huh um, Russell's Viper Venom is is used uh, to create the uh, uh, the enzyme reactions with the blood that uh, uh, that makes the test work so uh, this is why Venom Labs are are really really after um, Russell's Vipers I have my uh, tool back thank you um, because Russell's Vipers uh, Venom is uh, sought after by these companies that make this test uh, so they can accurately diagnose if a person has lupus so then the person can get the proper treatment um, so after this guy hangs out for a while and grows up a little bit uh, he'll probably go to Kentucky Reptile Zoo uh, for both uh, venom extraction and since he's a male uh, for breeding purposes um, you know they're beautiful to have and to display and stuff but um, you know it's a me medically necessary venom um, so uh, I'll make sure that uh, he gets into circulation uh, uh, and his venom's used for for good rather than trying to get into me um, I don't stock uh, anti-venom for Russell's Vipers. Their venom is variable with, throughout their range. Uh, I would need to use Indian uh, anti-venom, which is known to be a terrible anti-venom, not really, really very effective, uh, and it's not a clean uh, venom, and it causes a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, serum reactions and such. Um, the Siamensis, that's from Burma and Thailand. There is a specific antivenin for snakes from that particular area. Um, and I'm not sure what the Indonesians use, but uh, these are found on Komodo, uh, Rincon, and uh, uh, one other island in the Indonesian archipelago. How's that for a big word? <laughs> now I see little taipans up at the front of the window down there. So we'll give this uh, beast one more. Um, <clears throat> now I'm sure uh, these are hard to breed for some reason. Even the, uh, I'm friends with the, the keeper at the uh, at the Thai reptile farm where they make uh, anti venom for the Siamensis, and uh, you know you can get them to breed, but the keeper contacted me. He's like, uh, "What should I do? How should I get these guys feeding?" And you know that's the problem. Uh, either you cannulate them and feed them that way. Uh, until they get started and figure it out uh, or you uh, um, you know you just I mean when they're much smaller than this they're you know they're very difficult to uh, to work with and Russell's Vipers no I don't want you striking at me thank you Russell's Vipers um, from having force-fed a number of baby uh, uh, Siamensis um, 
their skin is very loose and it's easy for them to roll their head in their inside of their skin and get around on you and with the long fangs that they have it's not difficult for them to stick you so um, you know for weeks and weeks I was force feeding two or three times a week uh, a bunch of young baby uh, Russell's vipers and in the end actually none of them survived uh, it's too stressful for them and uh, uh, they just didn't make it it was stressful for me uh, you know um, you know pinning and restraining and force feeding you know 10 or 20 Russell's vipers uh, three times a week uh, is a bit of, you know it's a bit of a uh, perpetual Dr. Morgan trip because these are no jokes they're very difficult to restrain because they have this weird spinning sort of pattern to keep their head out of reach and as Jim has taught me uh, you never pin a snake when he's got a coil over another coil because uh, it's easy for him to escape that and uh, cause you bodily harm so we'll let him uh, do his thing I think he's had enough you like the kicky? We had a big chicken chick last night, uh, but I want to top her off a little bit with a couple more of these. What? Just eat. We've done this several times and I've not attacked you when your mouth was full, did I? Uh, I think I'm making it nervous. This is the first time I've been here. Yeah, that's probably it. You're a scary woman. Yep. Big and bad. Oh. Yep, she thinks you're trying to take it away. Oh, just straightening it out. There you When she gets frightened, she puts on hissy fits. Um, but personally, I think the female boom slang up there would be much more dangerous than she would be. I think hers is uh, all bluff. Um, I don't think there's any bluff involved with the uh, boom slang, uh, female boom slang. No, you don't want it from there. You want it from the head. See? Works best. It's funny, the, the boom slangs, which is Afrikanen for tree snake, uh, they seem to eat rodents preferentially uh, versus uh, uh, birds. Now, of course, the green mambas are arboreal also. Uh, they'll eat both, but but all the green mambas I have preferentially okay, going to try it the hard way, huh? okay preferentially feed on uh, on birds uh, over rodents which I find a bit odd I 
I know, you just wanted to chew on the chick a little longer before you swallowed her. Either that or you wanted to eat the pecker last. I'm hoping she's a future mate for uh, for Kermit. It's a little out of season right now, but uh, uh, I plan to move her over uh, to Kermit's cage uh, sometime this summer, and I'll move the uh, South African variety of green mamba uh, to its own cage or perhaps even this one. There you go. Good girl. Huh? A little skittish.